I feel really ashamed because I leave this country, but I can leave my mother and I can leave my son. Since Putin's army launched a ferocious invasion into Ukraine last week, civilians have desperately tried to escape the worsening onslaught. One way to gauge that desperation is to measure the long lines of cars attempting to leave the country via Ukraine's western border. The lines are 50 kilometers long. Those who don't even have cars are forced to walk that distance in the snow with their children. They drag the few belongings they've managed to grab and their pets behind them. Well, I'm about 40 to 50 kilometers away from the border, and this is the start of the line of cars to the border with Poland, where people are beginning to flee. And as you can see behind me, people have left their cars and are literally doing it on, on foot. 40 to 50 kilometers they've got to walk. It's a seven to 10 hour walk. People are doing this with their luggage, they're doing it with their children, and they're doing it with their pets. It's too far for me, because you're the 40 kilometer, we have to go and buy walk. 50? Yeah, 50 kilometers. And you're going to have to walk 50 kilometers? Yeah. Uh, like I said before, I feel shame, uh, exhausted because it's a long travel and it's not over because uh, before us, uh, 14, uh, 14 buses. 14 buses? 14 buses, yeah. The escape routes out of Ukraine are getting increasingly harder. As civilian areas of major cities come under heavy fire, paths to safety have disappeared and the few roads left have become increasingly crowded. More than a million Ukrainians have now fled the conflict since it started a week ago, according to the UN. The paths north and east are blocked by Belarus and the Russian border, leaving the displaced to try and enter Poland, Hungary and Slovakia to the west, or Romania and Moldova to the south of the country. Here at Lviv station, 70 kilometers from the Polish border, I witnessed devastating scenes. Families have been torn apart. Men aged between 18 and 60 are ordered to stay in Ukraine and so are forced to say goodbye to their loved ones, their mothers, their children, their wives, possibly forever at the platforms. Some children are even traveling alone as their parents are stuck under shelling in other parts of the country. Well, here at the train station in Lviv, people are desperate to get any trains anywhere outside of Ukraine. The people that are queuing up behind me here in the snow want to try and get to Poland or Hungary or anywhere. The problem is, is that there just are no trains. Every hour we're hearing that there might be a train coming and it's delayed. And there are desperate people here who've been waiting for 24 hours on the platform. As you can also tell, it's now snowing. There's minus temperatures here. People are waiting on the platform. People are also waiting at the border. What we've been actually hearing is it's such a long wait to get into Poland. People are actually turning around and coming back again and trying to find alternative ways to get out of the country. Meanwhile, UNHCR says the numbers of people fleeing are rising every minute. As Russia's bombing hits more civilian targets, the UN warns as many as four million people could try to flee the country, while seven million others will be displaced internally. Ordinary citizens have banded together to help those midway through this gruelling and chaotic journey to safety. At the Las Kerbas Theatre in Lviv, I met one group of Ukrainians who have turned a popular art centre into a temporary displacement camp for those needing shelter along the refugee trail. Natalia, uh, you're an actress here in this theatre. Can you tell us what you're doing here and, and how you're hosting IDPs? 24 Але потім ми зібралися в театрі і подумали, чим би ми могли бути корисним, і вирішили створити такий простір для людей. З цілої України це біженці наші, які втікають за кордон і фактично можуть тут перебути. І ми дали клич людям, і люди зголосилися і почали приносити сюди їжу, продукти, ну все-все-все, що ви тут бачите. Ліжка – це є наші театральні станки, на яких ми граємо вистави, але тепер люди на них можуть спати. Долучалися волонтерські групи і долучаються гуманітарні волонтерські групи. І у нас дуже великий наплив людей. Ці два дні все заповнено на 100%. Приблизно до 20 людей ми можемо поселитися. One of the people using the theater's help was Alexander. 
He's a 24-year-old arriving from Kyiv to help some of his family get out of the country. But as a man of fighting age, he can only take them to the border. I hope that all people who died in this war, uh, they didn't die for nothing, they died for our... Mm, for our... Freedom. Freedom, yes. Yeah. Freedom is the main point because the uh, Russian army takes our mm, freedom. Uh, two days ago, my grandmother died from uh, COVID, and my wow. mo my mother is uh, my mother and my aunt and their children are uh, right now uh, in Kiev, uh, near Kiev, near Bucha. They can't even uh, come to her, uh, and they can't do anything uh, because mm, Russian soldiers dis destroy our. In, uh, uh, in, uh, they destroy buildings, they destroy the roads, they can't uh, to see their mother, they can't do anything because of uh, Russian soldiers, because of war, uh, they can't see her. I'm so sorry to hear this. Uh, this is very, very difficult for you. I mean, do you have a message that you would like to send specifically? Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, for your help. Because uh, United Kingdom helped us a lot, uh, and also England, uh, you helped us a lot. You were uh, almost the first country who started to make a big help yeah. for us. Uh, uh, so, and thank for all for all the help that you done to us. As Russia's onslaught intensifies, with Putin warning his war will continue until the end, Ukraine's window of opportunity to get its citizens to safety is growing smaller and smaller by the minute.